This is Cecil B. DeMille in Hollywood. From the stage of the Lux Radio Theater, I can visualize an audience that stretches around the world. With you of the armed forces go the hopes and prayers of your country. Indeed, the hopes and prayers of the world. But you are not alone. You march in the shadow of 130 million people who stand united behind you. And as one small symbol of this unity, we bring you these, well, let's say letters from home. Letters in the form of the same entertainment you might enjoy if you were at home. Tonight the play is Arise, My Love. And our two stars are here to speak to you now. Loretta Young and Ray Milland. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. I wish tonight that I could offer you a telephone. And on the other end of the line might be all the mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and sweethearts whose hearts have gone with you. But even if I can't do that, I can say one thing they would all say. America's proud of you. Yes, Loretta. And proving that pride with planes and tanks and guns and ships produced in a never-ending line by America's industrial might. All those things say good luck better than words. And right now, you'll hear the familiar words that say hello from home. Lux presents Hollywood. <laughs> Radio Theater brings you Loretta Young and Ray Milland in Arise, My Love. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. So pleaded the poet in the Song of Solomon. The modern twist is provided by the hero of tonight's play who whispers it in the ear of his airplane every time he takes off. And modern is the word for Paramount's romantic thriller, Arise, My Love, which comes to this stage tonight decorated by two of the brightest stars in the Hollywood sky, Loretta Young and Ray Milland. Loretta is cast as a reporter, quite the loveliest reporter I've ever laid eyes on. And Ray, after many months with me in Reap the Wild Wind, returns to a part he played superbly in Arise, My Love. Like most exciting dramas, this is a story of boy meets girl. Boy aviator meets girl war correspondent and begins a trail of adventure that leads from a Spanish prison to a torpedoed steamer in the Atlantic with the war drums of the world playing the theme song of their romance. Just recently, the Lux Radio Theater, which Lux Toilet Soap brings together each week, this audience, has expanded rather considerably. The last row on the balcony used to be somewhere in northern Canada. Now it's somewhere in Australia. Because the Lux Radio Theater, through shortwave and other facilities, is now heard by American armed forces all over the world. For many years, your support of our product has had a double reward, the enjoyment of these plays and the value of Lux Toilet Soap itself. But now to that double reward, a third has been added. Remember that you're the one who keep this curtain going up every Monday night. And now you have the satisfaction of knowing that you're also helping raise a magic curtain for thousands of American boys far from home. So here's the first act of Arise, My Love, starring Ray Milland as Tom Martin and Loretta Young as Augusta Nash. <laughs> Spain in the year 1939. The Civil War is over. Of the soldiers of fortune who came from all parts of the world to join in the conflict, only a few remain, waiting to be written off in a military prison near Madrid. One of these is the American aviator, Tom Martin. Sentenced to be shot, he spends his last few hours in a game of solitaire, while near the barred window, a priest stands looking at him with sorrowful eyes. From the prison courtyard comes the thunder of the firing squad. That was Oviedo. He flew in my squadron. I guess he never heard that volley. Lead travels faster than sound. Well, black tail on the red jack. Oh, my son, let us stop this foolish game. You know what will happen at five o'clock. Father, where's your tact? You know, I couldn't sleep last night trying to decide what my last words were going to be when I stand up out there. I saw a waver between death to tyrants and long live liberty. 
But I finally decided to stay with music. What do you think of this? Looky, 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 here goes oh, Cookie. Please, please, my son. During these last few hours, isn't there anything I can do for you? Yeah, give me some better cards. My son, I am not of your religion, but within a few hours you must face your creator. Examine your heart deeply. Do you find no repentance there and no regret? Regret? You bet. I had one life, and what did I do? I wasted it in some Palooka preliminaries in Spain, just before Hitler and Chamberlain warm up for the main event. I tell you, those Nazis know how to fly. When I think of the fun I could have taking pot shots of those monkeys... My son, let us set aside the question of repentance. There are still other matters. Are there no final instructions you wish to give? No last messages? Well, here's my will. Here's the menu I've drawn up for my last meal. Some green turtle soup, a little squab with some wild rice, and a bottle of good burgundy. And for dessert, a bubble dancer served with some soft music for the next cell. Uh, I, I wish I were more competent to deal with your situation, my son. This is my first execution. Now, don't worry, Father. It's mine, too. Uh, uh, Red nine and the black ten. Hey, that's not bad. Bad. Who's that? It is the prison guard. Trata de un indulto. What's he saying? It, it concerns a pardon. Who's been pardoned? La esposa del prisionero ha tenido una audiencia esta mañana con las autoridades generales. Not so fast. What was that, Padre? Shh, shh, shh. Ya ha firmado el indulto. La señora espera a su esposo en el despacho del comandante de la prisión. Bendito sea Dios. Look, Padre, I don't want to intrude, but is that my pardon he's talking about? Yes, my son, an interview was granted by the highest military authorities. Your wife has... My wife? Yes, they have listened to the entreaties of your wife. It is a full pardon. She's waiting for you in the office of the governor of the prison. My wife is waiting in the governor's office? Yes. Vamos, enseguida. Por aquí. Uh, come, my son, quickly. What a blessed outcome. This is a miracle, my son. A glorious miracle. Oh, it's a miracle, all right. Because strictly between you and me, Padre, I haven't got a wife. Pass your stay. Uh, go in, my son. Go in. Sure. Tom. Oh, Tom, it's you. It's your funny old face. Huh? Let me look at you, darling. Oh, you look pale. You've lost weight. Oh, you think so? Oh, Governor, look at him. He's completely dazed. Huh? Darling, don't you understand? You're free. Your wife is here, Augusta. Haven't you got a kiss for her? Oh, sure, sure. Darling. Oh, darling, it's been so long. One moment, Senora Marti. Oh, yes, Governor. Senor Marti. My superior has seen fit to show you clemency. He did so because of the pleadings of your wife. But before that pardon will take effect, you must give to us your written pledge to leave this country at once and never to take up arms against the gate. Oh, once he's out of here, he'll never come back. Tom, you promise, don't you, darling? Oh, me? Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Good. And now, one thing more. Is this your passport, Senor Martin, your photograph? Well, it looks like it. It says here, Thomas Fuller Martin, born June 22nd, 906, yeah. Cleveland, Ohio. That's me. It also says unmarried. Oh, does it? Oh. Oh, so that's how you got abroad. That's how you managed to enlist. Why, Governor, they never would have taken him if they'd known he was married. That's why he did it. Yes, that's why I did it. Oh, huh? Tom, leaving me in New York in an apartment with back rent and one child and, and another one on the way. No. Oh, Tom, I hate you. I hate you. Maybe I shouldn't have come for you at all. Maybe we'd be better off if they'd shot you. Senor, senor. There you are, Governor. Now you can see why I ran away. Always crying, always hysterical. Now listen, baby, with you bawling like this, oh, I'm not Tom. sure I wouldn't rather face the firing squad. Oh, Tom, you don't love me. Why, sure I do. No, you sure don't. Sure I do, baby. Now don't cry. Oh. Of course he does, senor. You will leave at once, senor. Thanks, Governor. Oh. Father, you come with me. We'll see if the papers are drawn up. Yes, oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, darling. Say, who in blazes are you? Shh. For heaven's sake, be careful if you don't want two people shot instead of one. They might be listening. But what is this? What gives out? Shh. You're just doing me a favor. Doing you a favor? Yes. I am? I'm Augusta Nassar, the Associated News. I thought I'd make a great story. A what? A beat, a headline, an exclusive story, don't you see? Well, I'll... But why pick me? It had to be an American for the American papers. You can see that. Oh, sure. Well, you don't mind, I hope. Oh, no, no. I'm glad to be of service. <laughs> Sorry, senor. I hope oh. you haven't come back too soon. Oh, no, it's quite all right. Yes, I've entirely forgiven her. Yes. You have forgiven her? After all she has done for you? Oh, an amazing girl, my <laughs> wife. <laughs> you will sign here. Yes, uh, never under any circumstances to engage in any activity connected with Spain. Oh, look, Governor, I'm kind of a music lover. Is it all right if I listen to Carmen now and then? <laughs> <laughs> Tom, aren't you cute? Oh, yeah. May I lend you my car, senor? Oh, thank you. No, I've hired one. It's waiting outside. We're catching the plane for Paris. Paris. Come on, Tom. Now tell the governor you've had a lovely time. 
And thank well, you for everything. Thank you, Governor, and goodbye. Take care of Adolf. Adolf? Yes, I've uh, shared my cell for the past six months with Adolf. He's a rat, but very smart. I taught him to hold up his paw like that. That's <laughs> enough, Tom. Uh, he never knows what he's saying, Governor. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Come on, driver, shake it up, will you? Bellos, Bellos. Si, senor. All right, lady, now how did you get away with it? Well, it was simple. A wedding ring was all the makeup I needed. But weren't there millions of guards? How'd you get in? After waiting three days in the anteroom for an interview, I had to whip up a faint. Then came a couple of hours crying. Yes, sir. -y. His Excellency cried like a baby. I had to blow his nose while he was signing the pardon. Well, that ought to tickle the readers of that, uh... What was the name of that paper you write for? Associated News. 400 of them, New York to San Francisco. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll subscribe to each one for six months. If you'd take three subscriptions to each, I could get 400 scooters. Hey, what kind of a church makes a sound like that? That's no church. That's the alarm bell at the prison. What? Oh, don't tell me something slipped up after all the trouble I've taken. Hey, driver, what's the matter? Every car must stop when the alarm sounds, senor. Why? Regulation. Some prisonero escaped, maybe. Oh, don't get out, senor. Listen, driver, we've got to get to the airport pronto. I cannot drive, senor. Well, I can. Beat it. Oh, no, the regulation. Come on, I'm going to have to bounce you one. You let go. All right, brother. Oh. oh, well, hurry up. Hurry up. Come on. Sit tight. There's the airport. Listen, there's a car behind as us. As long as it's still behind us, it's okay. See that plane over there? When I stop, get in and get in fast. Look, soldiers. Here we go. Get set. Get in the plane. Hey, my typewriter. Oh, for the love of, get in there. Here comes the mechanic. Mr. Teddy, take Hello, mechanic. Hey, they're shooting at us. Get in, get in. I'm in. Hey, I'm... Hold on, here we go. All right, well, here comes my little prayer. What prayer? Always when I take off, the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 13. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Well, he can sit up now without a range. Come on, get up. Don't be so scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you think I'm scared? Yeah. Well, I... I was. I was scared the story was petering out. You know, this comes in mighty handy. I, uh... I needed a good climax. I'm delighted. <laughs> you don't know how good the climax is. Huh? We've got exactly 47 gallons of gas. <laughs> this ship, there's two miles to the gallon. It's 94 miles. It's 120 to the French border. You mean we might have to land in Spain? Well, if we get a slight tailwind, we may be able to glide the difference. Gliding twixt life and death. That ought to make pretty good reading, don't you think? Yeah. Oh, I, I'd probably have thought of it anyway. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. You mind if I get out my typewriter? I want to get a good start. Go ahead. Here's a little cotton wool for us to hide in for a while. Yeah. We hid in the clouds, a sanctuary of whipped cream. Oh, is that the sort of stuff you write, Augusta? And why don't you rewrite your name, Augusta? It's like talking to a battleship. <laughs> well, they call me Gusto. For three years, I've had a column. In Paris with Gusto. Haven't I seen it someplace? No, no, no. It's a fashion column. Flash. Chiffon makes comeback. Flash. Suzanne Scoop Skunk Corset. Oh, now listen. Don't tell me this story's going to be what the well-dressed fugitive is wearing. No, sirree. From now on, it's front page features for me with a byline syndicated and copyrighted. Well, let's get started. Thomas Martin. Hey, what was that middle name of yours? Thomas Fuller Martin. Ah. Sometimes known as Thomas Fuller Malarkey. <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> Look, uh, Gusto, why not be practical, huh? What's the use of writing that stuff now? If this is going to be our last hour, well, why not spend it like sensible people, huh? Uh, for instance? Well, you might move over and kiss the lobe of my ear. Thanks. Just here and gently, without breathing down my neck, you see I'm a little ticket. Uh-huh. You know, Gusto, it's a, it's a funny thing that you of all people should be sitting beside me. You're precisely my type. Yeah? How long uh, were you in that prison? Ten months. Well, after ten months in jail, anything would be your type. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's you, really. You know, Gusto, uh, there are three ways of approaching a woman. Mm -hmm. The first one winds between rose bushes and forget-me-nots to the song of nightingales. It takes about six months. Yes? The second way is all dusty with deep understandings, good fellowship, common interests. That takes about six weeks. But the third way is a shortcut. Uh-huh. The last time a man tried a shortcut, I bit his nose. Why, Gusto? Hey, 
Hey, hey, look. There's a plane. You're wrong, Gus. There are three planes. One over there and two up on top. Can they see us? No. All that can happen is when they start swooping, they might dent our fenders. Hit us? Well, c- can't you do something? Sure. We'll take a little dive into that cloud bank down there. Wait till they start shooting at us. They're shooting now. I can see the puff of smoke. Take a deep breath and yell. What for? What How do you feel? Oh, fine. But I... I left my stomach up there. What's the matter? Were we hit? That's what they think, I hope. They lose a good hour looking for our wreckage down below. Say, you're pretty clever, aren't you? Yeah, now that's what I was trying to tell you. Now to get back to those three ways, Look here, Mr. Martin. Don't sneak up on me. Oh, Gus. Now get away, Martin. Now listen. I'll bite your nose. (laughs) You just try it. (laughs) Oh! Oh! There they are, just getting off the train. Hey, Gusto. Hey, Mr. Martin, this way. Listen, you newsreel guys all set up. All right, Amy's here. Gusto. Hello, boss. Stand right here, Gusto. Every paper in Paris wants pictures and newsreels. Mr. Martin, right here, please. What for? This is my boss, Mr. Phillips. Uh-huh. Okay, let's go now. Quiet, everybody. Look at the camera. Smile, please. Now. Miss Nash, as European head of the Associated News, it is my great privilege to welcome you after an exploit as brilliant as it was daring. You thrilled the hearts of millions of readers with your story which appeared exclusively with the Associated News in 400 papers. Congratulations, Miss Nash. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. I'm glad I was able to do my bit for a fellow American and the Associated News. <laughs> and now let me congratulate you, Mr. Martin. Thanks. Oh, I notice your face is bandaged. We hope the injury is not serious. Uh, no, no, it's nothing. Well, maybe you'll tell us all about it, Mr. Martin. Sure. I ran into an iceberg. Huh? Yeah, and she bit me on the nose. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to bow out of this three-ring circus. Miss Nash, thanks. Whatever thanks life is worth, so long. Hey, Mr. Martin, come back here, Mr. Martin. Well, what's the matter with him? Hey, Tom! Tom, it's up! Hey, how are you, Pink? How are you, Chef? Well, hello, Tom. How are you? Say, am I glad to see you guys. Glad to see you, too. So they didn't get you after all. No, no, no. How about you, Shep? How'd you get out of it? Well, they shot us down off the coast near Barcelona. Yeah, a British cruiser came along and took us to Marseille. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Huh? Isn't that one of my suits? Yeah, that's right. So is this, too. Yeah, you see, we didn't think you'd have any use for it, so we claimed your trunk. Yeah, we wanted something to remember you by. Something that had been very close to you. Well, how about a couple of pair of shorts? Oh, we're wearing those, too. Oh, you are, huh? Well, come on, let's get to a hotel. Oh, sure, there's a swell one just down the road. Mr. Martin! Where are you? Uh, Mr. Martin! Martin, if he wants to go, let him go. Well, now, what's the idea, Gusto? Why did he walk out on us? Oh, it's just his nose. Well, nose or no nose, we need that guy. They've telephoned from New York. They're hot for more stuff on him. I wired a thousand words. Well, they want 50,000. We've got to get it for Now, look, Mr. Martin and I had a slight misunderstanding. He tried a shortcut. Judas, ain't you scary at woman? First you yammer that you want to write something better than that fashion drool. Finally, you get a break. Do you put your teeth into it? Yeah, that was the trouble. A bath, a clean pair of socks, a hotel in Paris. Oh, boy, have I been dreaming about this. Hey, I see in the paper they finally found somebody to play Scarlett O'Hara. Yeah? Yeah, and it looks like the Yankees in the American League again. Say, if we miss that World Series again this year... Oh, well... Of course, that all depends on the rabbits. Those rabbits. Those rabbits. What rabbits? Oh, Shep's mother runs a rabbit farm in New Jersey, and she promised to send over passage money. Yeah, as soon as the rabbits cooperate a little. Hey, are you serious? You guys want to go home, honestly? You bet. Back to Mama, huh? Back under the old stove like a pair of wet galoshes. See, why did you guys come over here in the first place? Me? Well, I came over because I'm a hero. Flash Gordon. Well, what do you want us to do? The war's all over. You mean the first round's over. You heard what Hitler said over the radio, didn't you? I have but three desires in my heart. Peace, peace, and peace. Yeah, and the next day he took Czechoslovakia. Tomorrow it'll be Poland, Romania, Hungary. We'll get another crack at those big boys. War is coming, and I can smell it. Romania. Say, that reminds me, Shep. Do you think Tom would go for that Romanian gal on the first floor? I'm not interested. She's got the cutest lisp. Yeah, she had, but she left yesterday for Bucharest. Oh, she did, did she? How do you know? Well, will you shut up and stop talking about women? Self-control. That's all they think about. They're nothing but a bunch of stuffy, chilly, self-centered... They bore the living be jabbers out of me. I don't want to ever see one again. Hello. Say, what happened to you while you were in prison? Nothing. Okay. Tom, the desk for you. Yeah, let me help. Hello? Who? Where? Well, send her up! Yahoo! Hey, hey, 
Hey, what goes? Hey, Peter, fellas, outside, quick. I got an appointment here. Yeah, who? Listen, will you, fellas, I'll say this for, for women. You never know. After what happened, I figured she was about as human as a mermaid in a municipal fountain. So what happens? The phone rings, the mermaid wants to kiss and make up. Just like that. It's that newspaper woman, huh? Mind your own business and get out of here. Well, keep your nose down on the turns. Both of you out. Uh, good fishing, Charles. Go on. Hello. Beat it, beat it. Well, come in, Augusta. This is the pleasantest surprise I've ever had. <laughs> I might as well tell you, I had to come. You did? Uh-huh. Well. There's too much unfinished business between us. Oh, that's the way I feel, too. <laughs> I've got to know everything about you, every detail. Well, I'm at your complete disposal. How about a little drink first? No. No, I want my mind to be as clear as a bell. Uh-huh. Well, a little music, huh? Oh, come on now, Tom. Let's concentrate. This story's got to go to New York tomorrow. Why, <laughs> Gusto. What story? Story of your life. Lesson, is that what you came up here for? Well, what did you think? Oh, this is fine. Now, about your early years, any bright childhood things? My mother was a manic depressive and my father had decided homicidal tendencies. <laughs> I shouldn't be surprised. You were born in Cleveland, weren't you? Yes, Miss Nash, <laughs> I was born in Cleveland, but tonight I'm in Paris. And they have a guillotine here for people who work at this hour. It's 8 o'clock. Um, 10 hours. All right, it's 10 hours. But on the Champs-Élysées, the lights are bursting into bloom. Women, all set for their rendezvous, stand putting perfume behind their ears. And do you expect me to sit here and tell you what happened when I was in knee pants? Anything of interest? Miss Nash, have you ever been to Maxine's? Ah, uh, tourist stuff. That sort of place doesn't mean anything to mm. you? Red plush and gilt and women's shoulders? The fireworks of crepe Suzette and a wine card so big you can hide behind it? L'amour. All right, l'amour. But I'm devoting my first evening to it. Also my second, my third, and my fourth. <laughs> That's an awful lot of amour. <laughs> I was in jail an awful long time. Oh. Miss Nash, I reserved a table for nine o'clock. Well, I won't go, Mr. Martin. You won't go? No. Who invited you? I'm meeting a lady there. Oh. Oh, with perfume behind her ears? Well, as a matter of fact, she's a Romanian. Oh. And she's got the cutest lisp. Is that so? All right, Augusta, that's enough. Now, Peter. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll come back tomorrow morning. I'd better warn you. The last time I stepped out in Paris was on a Monday. I didn't get home until Thursday. Oh, now, come on, Tom. This is no joke. I have a deadline to meet. And I have to meet life and love with arms outstretched. You know, when we were in that plane, I had a hunch you were a stinker. Now I'm sure of it. Oh, ho. And just when I was about to make a very soft-hearted suggestion. What? You know anything about Romanians? No. Well, they have no sense of time, whatever. And the lady I'm meeting tonight is notoriously late, even among Romanians. Now, if you want to come along to Maxime's, I can give you the time until she arrives. I get it. I take notes between the plush and the crepe Suzette. And when the lady comes, I expect you to run along like a good little girl. Only run quickly, will you? Sure, sure. Don't worry, Mr. Martin. There will be no Balkan entanglements. In just a few minutes, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Loretta Young and Ray Milland, will return in Act Two of Arise, My Love. It's June. College commencement time. Time for sweet girl graduates to get their degrees. A group of them are coming down the aisle. Oh, look at Mary Smith. Isn't she lovely? There's something about her all right. You know, she and Bill Thomas are engaged. It's a few days later, and Mary is walking down another aisle. Mary, I'm the luckiest man in the world. I just want to make you happy forever. That's the way men feel about girls like lovely young Mary, girls who have that most appealing of charms, soft, smooth, adorable skin. But there's something about a lovely complexion that always makes masculine hearts beat faster. Clever girls know this, and they know, too, that gentle white Lux toilet soap gives skin protection it needs for beauty. Lux toilet soap has active lather. It removes stale cosmetics and every trace of dust and dirt thoroughly. Yet the touch of this creamy lather on the skin is gentle as a caress. Protect your own precious complexion with active lather facials. The same care famous Hollywood stars use every day. You just pat Lux Toilet Soap's active lather lightly in. Rinse with warm water, then with cool, and pat gently dry with a soft towel. Now, touch your skin. See how exquisitely smooth it feels, how fresh it looks. Try this Lux Toilet Soap care regularly for 30 days. You'll agree with lovely women everywhere who say... It's Lux Toilet Soap for me. The Hollywood stars use it. I use it, too. 
Let regular care with this pure, fine complexion soap help you keep your skin beautifully soft and smooth. Get three cakes of Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act two of Arise, My Love, starring Ray Milland as Tom Martin and Loretta Young as Augusta Nash. Maxims is jammed to the doors. At the far end of the bar, Tom sits waiting for his mythical Romanian lady while Gusto takes down the story of his life. Now, that time you took off with a hot dog stand mixed up in your landing gear, was that your only serious accident? Except when I broke my legs. Oh, when was that? When I jumped off the barn with Mother's umbrella for a parachute. Oh, that's wonderful. That goes way back in the beginning. Let me see. Look, uh, do you believe in give and take? Within limits. Well, how about me asking you a question now? In fact, asking for some advice. Shoot. Well, you see, the lady who's coming, the last time we saw each other, we had quite a bit of a row. Hmm. I guess it was my fault. She seemed to get the impression that I was abrupt, <laughs> kind of out of control. Oh, not you. Huh. Well, tell me, Gusto, you're smart. How could I erase a footprint that looks as though it was left by a heel? Well, that sounds almost human. Well, you see, I'm crazy about the girl. She's swell, really, only... Well, she's got standards, and you know me. Yeah. Well, let's see. When she comes, and, and after you've dined and danced, well, why hide behind the wine card? What do you suggest? Oh, a change of pace. Take her out of here. Out where there's a breeze and some stars. Find an old cab and drive up a cobbled street in Montmartre. Don't talk. No, not even a word. Just sit and wait. How long? Well, count the clop, clop, clop of the horse's hooves on the cobbles. Count to a thousand. And then possibly, now just possibly, mind you, kiss her. Huh. Waiter. Monsieur. Get me a cab and have a wait outside. Won't be all good, Monsieur. Of course, the lady being Romanian, they loathe horses. <laughs> uh, look, uh, about this dancing, do you think it's absolutely essential? You see, my waltz is bad, but my rumba's a public scandal. <laughs> I'll just hold it tight and let the music tell you. Uh-huh. You wouldn't care to help me brush up a little? Sure. But, but if she comes... Oh, I'll from... keep an eye on the door now. Come on. Say, you're not bad at all. Yeah? Wait till I hit a downdraft. <laughs> the music's nice. You having a good time? Oh, yes. <laughs> Me too. You know, I almost wish my Romanian wasn't coming at all. <laughs> Say, wait a minute. It's, it's 10 o'clock. Is it? Yes, isn't she late? Even for a very late Romanian? Mm-hmm. And maybe she isn't coming at all. Maybe. Maybe she doesn't even exist. Maybe. And maybe I walked into a trap. Gusto. Maybe I even helped to build it. Yes, Gusto, you saw. You bet I am. We could have had dinner a whole hour ago. Nine hundred and ninety-five, ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, one thousand. Come here, Gus. Oh. oh, Tom, Tom, don't. Now that's enough, please. <laughs> you cheated. I only made it nine hundred and ten. Well, I, I couldn't wait. Do you mind? No. No, hold me tight. Till we get to the corner down below. Well, what's at the corner? My hotel. That's where I leave you. Yeah? Like fun you do. Oh, now, Tom, I'm sorry. I've had a grand time, really. Not just this evening. I mean, well, ever since I first met you. <laughs> you and your cheap Romanian tricks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tom, I've loved every second of oh, it. Oh, Gusto, come here. No, 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 please don't. Well, listen, you tell me you like me, and in the same breath you say you're walking out. Now, what sort of a woman are you? I'm a career woman. I've got my foot in a door that I've been pounding against for years, and I'm not going to let anything turn me away from it. Well, what has that got to do with us? Well, I know me. Now, some people get a slight case of love. 
All they need is an aspirin and a hot water bottle, and then, well, it's all over, but not me. If I fall in love in January, I'm still miserable next December. Really, I get a temperature of 105, chills, fever. It knocks me out. You know, I flunked geometry three times running because I was in love with a professor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Tom, I want my mind free. But, darling, it's too late now. Your cheeks are flushed, your pulse is unsteady. Driver, Erete. All right, go ahead. Won't do you any good. You'll go up to your room, sit at your typewriter, and mess around with words. All of a sudden, you won't be able to stand it. You'll dash straight out of your room to the Cafe Magenta. Why the Cafe Magenta? That's that little place just across the street, see? Mm-hmm. What about it? I'll be waiting for you until you come. Oh, that's fine. That gives me a fade-out on your life story. He lived happily ever after at the Café Magenta. If you want me to describe Tom Martin, he's not exactly good-looking. He is not very good-looking. If you want me to describe Tom Martin, he... He's very good-looking. Oh. Who is it? Madame, Madame, that man you were expecting is downstairs. What? Well, 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 I'm not here. Tell him I've died. Oh, he did. We told him everything. Well, don't, don't let him up here. Oh, they're trying to stop him now. The night porter is defending the staircase. Oh. And she is like a tiger. He keeps saying it is something that cannot wait. Well, do something, please. Do something. Out of my way. Oh, no, oh. monsieur. Tom, the crazy oh, idiot. He's coming now, madame. Oh, Tom, pull yourself together. I'll see, I'll see you, but... Just all. Oh, Mr. Phillips. Come back. No, 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 this isn't the man. Let me go, will you? Listen, this is Mr. Phillips. Have no fear, madame. Cut it out. I will bash him on the head. No, the don't hurt him. It's Mr. Phillips. Oh, there. Oh, oh good heavens, oh. get out of here. Madame. Go on, quickly, get oh. out. Both of us. Oh, Mr. Oh. Phillips, I, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, my head. Oh. Will you kindly tell me why I have to fight my way through the entire staff of a second-rate hotel to see you? Oh, it's all right. Oh. Hey, come on, now, you're all right, aren't you? Yeah, just a slight skull fracture. I'll deduct that from your salary. Well, I, I wasn't expecting you. Well, who were you expecting, Jack the Ripper? Uh, I, I was just trying oh, to work. never mind, never mind. Gusto Nash, you're fired as of immediately. It's not true. No. No, oh, I know it's not true. I just wanted to taste the words, the sheer rapture oh. of it. Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's my painful duty to hand you the best assignment in Europe. What? What's the job? Associated news correspondent in Berlin. They're counting on you for intimate personal stuff on Hitler and his gang. Oh, say that again. Special Berlin correspondent. Oh. oh, wait a minute. What happened to Stanley Kirk? What happened to Stanley Kirk? He's leaving Germany by special request of the Nazi government. He goes to a reception at Air von Ribbentrop's and keeps yelling for gefilte fish. Oh, oh. oh, my head. Look, look, do you think I can handle the job? No, no, but you get a crack at it anyway. Oh, I'm not happy. I, I'm not happy at all. When do you want me to leave? Saturday. That's three days. Yes, that'll give you time enough to have your eyebrows plucked. Say, how about Tom Martin? What? Yeah, what about that stuff? Did you see him? Oh, uh, yes, yes, I saw him. I, uh... Look, I, I don't want to go on Saturday. Now what's the matter? Cold feet? No, no, I want to go right away. Tomorrow morning, the first train. Now don't tear yourself to pieces. Oh, please let me go, Mr. Phillips. Look, I've got a running start. I'm in my stride. I, I don't want to fool around Paris. It's no good for me. I want to work. Berlin sounds tough and absorbing. It's, yeah. it's just what I need. Listen to the swish of that new broom. Well, it's, it's... I'm afraid if I stay here that... That what? Oh, listen... I've just got to go. Your compartment is here, madame. Thank you. Hello there. Well, what in the world? <laughs> Hello. Allow me to wish you the most delightful of journeys. And may I also take the liberty of offering you a small bon voyage gift? Oh, thanks. How did you know I was on this train, bloodhound? Well, I ran into Phillips last night. Congratulations, foreign correspondent. Thanks. What's the gift? Something to wind around your heart with my humblest compliments. <laughs> Why, it's typewriter ribbon. That's right. That's what's ticking inside you, Miss Nash. A typewriter with 26 letters from A to Z. Well, thanks anyway. From the bottom of my typewriter. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, we're, we're leaving. Goodbye, Tom, and... 
Take good care of yourself. Thanks. H hey, you better hurry it. Oh, there's plenty of time. Would you like your window open? Listen, what? Thomas Martin, are you crazy? Crazy? How? Running after me. <laughs> I'm not running after you. We just happen to be running over the same track on the same train. It was pure coincidence. That's right. I see. And where are you going? To Warsaw. Oh, you're going to Warsaw. Yep. Volunteered Thomas Liss Martinovsky reporting for duty with the Polish Air Force. Uh-huh. And when did you enlist? Before breakfast. Oh. You don't believe me? Here, yeah, my credentials. Polish consulate is working night and day signing up flyers. Looks like any moment now. Uh-huh, it certainly does. Do you mind if I read? Yes, I do. Well, I'm sorry, but this is very important. What's the book? Mein Kampf? <laughs> you don't intend to wade through that. I certainly do. It's my homework for my new job. Uh-huh. Well, wake me up when you come to the part where he claims Milwaukee. What are you looking at? Uh, nothing. Oh, yes. Nothing at all. Yes, you were. You thought I was asleep. <laughs> well, if you were counting my eyebrows, I can help you. There are two. I wasn't doing anything of the kind. I was just looking out the window. What do you see, Gusto? Mm, a wood, trees. Yeah. The forest of Compiègne. Look at it. Like a kind grandmother dozing in her rocking chair. Old trees practicing curtsies in the wind because they still think Louis the Fourteenth is king. Who said that? Why? It doesn't sound like you. Well, I was just quoting a French boy who was with me in Spain. He grew up here. Oh. Whenever the bullets got thick, he used to talk about it. He wanted so much to see it again, to wade in the brooks, pick wild strawberries. His name was Andre. He sounds like a sweet boy. Oh, he was. You know, it would be kind of a nice gesture if we could step off this train and take his memory back. Back to the brooks and the strawberries. Yes, it's a pretty thought. You're quite sure that Andre is no relation to your Romanian lady? Oh, Gusto, you always think the worst of me. <laughs> I wonder why. Well, listen, Miss Willpower, you're as safe as a church. You're worried about your career. Well, nothing can stop you now. You're traveling toward it at 70 miles an hour. Next stop, Berlin. There's no danger. No danger, whatever. Well, now that nothing can stop you, you might just as well admit that you feel toward me exactly the way I feel toward you, exactly. All right. All right, I admit it. Now, there's no danger. Not at all. Even if I went over to you and took you in my arms. Tom, not... Even if we decided to step off this train and steal three days for ourselves. Three quiet, innocent days before we say goodbye. Perhaps never to see each other again. Perhaps never to see a forest again or a brook or a sky at peace. But the train doesn't stop. I but... know. No stops for us. Seventy miles an hour. No danger. Tom, you, you better stay over there on your own side of the seat. You might even I... be generous enough to say, kiss me, you big oh, idiot. Tom. I said no danger. We, we can't stop the train. Only by using the emergency brake. No. It's right up there. See it? That brass ring. Signal d'alarme. Pull only in case of danger. Oh, Tom, don't. I... Oh, Tom. Your forest. Our forest. Yes. Our forest. Don't you think we'd better leave? No. Let's never leave, darling. Mm -hmm. It's so cool and fresh. There's dew on your hair. <laughs> and there's an ant strolling up your cheek. I wish it were your lips. All right. <laughs> Such a little kiss. Yeah, such a little ant. I wish there'd been an elephant. <laughs> oh, Tom. It's as though you had a brand new set of senses, isn't it? As though you'd been tone deaf and colorblind before. As if you'd never laughed or cried. No tears, please. No, darling. No tears. It's a long day, darling. And it's still early. Maybe the sun will stop, huh? Maybe. You know, Gusto, in Spain, when there was just one more day between me and a hole in the sod, I, I didn't care a hang. I threw the hours away like a spendthrift. Now I feel like a miser, hoarding the minutes, counting the seconds. Darling, what was that? Look, over there, see? Oh, it's a deer. And a fawn. Oh, aren't they adorable? Tom, look, there's another one. Snow White must be giving a party, huh? Maybe. But it doesn't look like a party to me. 
Those animals are scared. Scared of what? I don't know, but they've got an instinct. Look at them. They're running for their lives. Oh, Tom, what does it mean? Listen. Do you hear that? Is it... Are those planes? There they are. Fifty. A hundred. Oh. It's begun, Gusto. The war's begun. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Loretta Young and Ray Milland in Act Three of Arise, My Love. Why is our young friend Sally looking mighty pleased with herself, too? <laughs> I feel pleased, Mr. Ruick. I just mailed a package to my cousin Jim, and I know it's going to make a hit. He's in the Army, you know, so I wrote him for a list of the things he really wanted. And what do you think they were? Oh, things to eat, probably. Sweet stuff, cookies and such. Ah, oh, surprise, Mr. Ruick. Jim didn't say much about food. Just mentioned that the Army serves swell desserts. But he did say hard candy's good. Soldiers can carry that in their pockets. <laughs> I sent him a big box of it. Here's some of the other things he wanted. Film for his camera, tooth powder. And he said, most of all, Sally, send me some soap. Send me lots of soap. And be sure it's Lux soap. We like the way it lathers. Well, Sally, I guess it didn't take you long to fill that request. <laughs> One dozen cakes of Lux toilet soap, Mr. Ruick, are even now on their way. And I'll bet you get special thanks from your cousin for that gift, Sally. Lux toilet soap sells like hotcakes with our boys in the services. You know, men go for that wonderful rich lather that's so quick and abundant, even in hard water. After a tough day's work, a Lux toilet soap shower feels like a million. That smooth white cake lathers fast. And because Lux toilet soap is hard milled, doesn't get mushy or soft. It can be used down to the last thin sliver. Yes, a man gets a lot of enjoyment from using this pure soap with a creamy, soothing lather. Active lather that swiftly carries away the day's dust and grime, leaves him feeling refreshed and fit. To women everywhere, here's a tip. Why not let the men in your family enjoy the luxury of using this fine white soap every day? Lux toilet soap costs so little, you know. Get a supply tomorrow. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Curtain rises on the third act of Arise, My Love, starring Loretta Young and Ray Milland. In the first days of the war, the Nazi war machine rolled like a black cloud over Poland, over Holland, over Belgium. Then from America came word to its citizens in Europe. This is the American embassy in Paris acting on instructions from Washington. Due to the grave international situation, all American nationals in France are urgently requested to return to America at the earliest possible moment. For further information and Turn advice, off, we Tom. suggest that you Trying to panic here, aren't they? See. Run, do not walk to the nearest exit. Yes. Well, I suppose they have to do it for the old men and lady tourists and the kids. But wouldn't you feel kind of foolish to beat it now the race is on? I suppose so. Imagine being in Cleveland, seeing the war from a newsreel in the little Nemo theater. And all he can do is hiss. And you, reading the war news instead of writing it. Well, that's for idiots, isn't it? Sure. Sure, sure, we stay. We're not turning back now. We're not running home just because we got sentimental for one day. Oh, no, we're making great gestures. We're gallant and reckless. What's the matter, Gusta? We're the new lost generation. You flying until it happens, till they smash you to bits. And I, riding and riding, and... I wouldn't care if I never wrote another word. Gusta. That's female and middle class, isn't it? to think maybe our lives are worth more than 25 cents. <laughs> Tom, you laugh at that little Nemo theater in Cleveland, and to me it sounds like heaven. <laughs> Come home with me, Tom. Please take me home. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the Ile de France is sold out. Aquitania sold out. We'll let you know as soon as possible. Just stay in line, please. Oh, oh, uh, Mr. Martin. Yeah? Have you got something for us? Yes, ma'am. The boat leaves Liverpool at 4 o'clock. Plane in one hour. Oh, good. Uh, your ticket, sir. Thank you. One hour. That doesn't leave you much time to see Phillips. Oh, that's all right. I'll send him my official resignation from the boat. 
Look, are you sure you want to take this boat? It sounds kind of crummy to it's me. It's headed for America, and that's all that matters. Oh, Gusto, you're as hysterical as those old hens over there. Don't tell me you're afraid. I'm scared to death. But, Gusto, the war is a thousand miles away. Well, those headlines aren't on the radio. Nor all those bugles blowing right in the ears of a confused liberal. And I do mean you. Now, look, honey, I'm not looking and I'm not listening. Now, don't tell me. You're itching all over like a reformed drunk. Not me. I've taken the pledge, sister. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, Tom! Martin! Shep, how are you? Hello, Pinky. Where the heck have you been? Hey, we thought you were in Poland. Well, I started out that way, but didn't quite make it. I, uh... Oh, uh, this is Miss Nash. Hi. Hi. Hello. How do you do? Gusto, I'd like you to meet my wardrobe. The blue suit is Pink O'Connor, and the brown herringbone is Joe Shepard. <laughs> well, seeing you boys in this line, I take it the rabbits came across. Just like the Johnstown flood. <laughs> yeah, only uh, we've changed our mind. You mean you're going to stay? Uh, you really didn't think we were a pair of heels, did you? Holding up and ducking for home now that the show's on again. You can get in the Royal Air Force now. You can? Yeah, and there's a big chance they might send us to Poland. Imagine the three of us meeting in Warsaw. Just a minute, boys. I want you to know something. I'm the one that's folding up. We just came out of there. That ain't possible. Oh, come on, Tom. Who are you kidding? No, no, I'm not kidding. It's on the level. We're going back and we're going to be married. A and settle down in Cleveland, maybe. Maybe Tom can get back his commercial license. And I'll be writing for American Housewife. How to preserve peaches. Kind of a quiet life. Oh. Well, that's fine. Yeah. Listen, boys. It's all my fault. I begged him not to break his neck. I like it too much. Well, come on. Why don't you say I'm a yellow belly and a big mouth at that? You, yellow? Who thinks you're yellow? <laughs> Guy that's got the nerve to get married. Yeah, that's more than Flash Gordon ever did. You're the hero. Why, sure. And, and don't worry about those Nazis either. We'll give them a special kiss for you. Well, so long, Tom. Goodbye, you lugs. Uh, goodbye. So long. See you, Tom. Cleveland, 1942. Okay. Tom? Yep. Uh, all the time we were talking to them, do you know what I was doing? I was saying your prayer. Arise, my love, and come away with me. Stuart? Yes, sir. That champagne ready? Right here, sir. Oh, boy, that looks good. You expecting a storm tonight, Stuart? Covering up the portholes? Just a precautionary measure, sir. The other multi has complete blackout for every boat. Oh, oh. Well, here you are, Gusta. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to drink to those two dizzy fools, those show-offs with their outsized ideals? Tilting at very large windmills with very small knitting needles. Here's to Augusta Nash, career woman, foreign correspondent extraordinary, queen of headlines. Goodbye, Augusta Nash, career woman. Here's to Thomas Fuller Martin, crusader, champion of the underdog, avenger of the oppressed. Goodbye, Tom Martin, crusader. And here's to our voyage to Cleveland and to our gallant ship that... Say, what's the name of this boat anyway? The Athena. <laughs> British liner Athenia goes down west of Hebrides. Athenia torpedo! There's another boat just pulled up on the beach, ma'am. No, he's not in that one. I saw it. Are those the last survivors? Well, over at the Coast Guard station, they say that uh, some other people were picked up by a British destroyer. Oh, thank you. Tom! Gusto! Tom! Gusto Nash! Darling! Gusto! Darling! Oh, darling, it's really you. Are you all right, Gusto? Oh, yes. Now I am. Bring a survivor this way. Oh, Tom, I... I never thought I'd see you again. Oh, Gusto, you look so awfully little in that lifeboat and pulled away. Don't talk to me about that lifeboat. I felt like jumping right out and swimming back to you and tell you what a liar you were. What a low trick it was to get me in by saying you'd come to me. I'd have knocked you cold and thrown you in if necessary. Oh, darling. What happened to you? Me? Oh, I put the sea in a life belt. I was yes. only in the water 40 minutes and the plane fished me out. Your, your eyes, they're, they're all bloodshot. Yeah, I, I guess that's from trying to see through the darkness last night. Oh. We were flying squares all night long. Flying? Yeah. Three other seaplanes came along and we flew around looking for survivors. It was like hunting Easter eggs. 
But say, those English flyers, they really know their stuff, Gusto. We had a kid from New Zealand in ours, and you ought to see the way he handled a 25-ton plane. He set it down two dozen times and picked it up again on a choppy sea, and that takes it out of you. The last time, he just fell forward on the stick, completely out, laughing, crying. So you took over. Well, I had to. And Gusto, listen. I asked him if they could use me. Tom. We're going after that submarine. They think they saw it when it was broaching. Oh, swell. We'll get those babies. There's a chance I wouldn't miss for anything in the world. Oh, Gusto, I don't see how I can pass it up, really. I, I'm here. They need me. Oh, darling, please don't look at me like that. Uh, like what? Don't make me feel as if I'm walking out on you. It'll only be for a day or two. There are lots of boats going home. Home? <laughs> Who wants to go home? Do you think I do? Now that I've got a story, a great story, an exclusive? Oh, no, Tom, look at me. Can't you see that old light in my eyes? I'm Augusta Nash again. Why, all I can think of is where's the nearest telephone and the next story and the next. <laughs> and when was it? Only yesterday we thought we could throw two people overboard. Their ambitions, their big dreams. Yes. But God knew better. He threw us right in after them. Yeah. Gusto, I, I've never loved you so much. Well, that's the best time to say goodbye, isn't it? Gusto. Yes, it is. Bye, Tom. Good luck, darling. I was on the Athenia. Exclusive eyewitness account by Augusta Nash. Warsaw burns under Nazi attack. Story by Augusta Nash. Norway gone. Gray tide sweeps north. Death trap in Flanders. Paris falls. Story by Augusta Nash. Look at them, in Paris, a city of light, so gay, so full of charm. Home of those three lovely sisters, Liberté, Galité, Fraternité. Mr. Phillips, that flyer is here. Huh? What flyer? This flyer. Hello, Phillips. Well, there's quite a parade out there. I only hope when they get to the tomb of the unknown soldier, he'll sit up and spit right in their eye. Where'd you blow from? I'm looking for Gusto Nash. Thought you were flying someplace. Well, I was sent to the showers. Little souvenir of Norway. They shot the plane out from under me. Huh. Arm broken just above the elbow. That's too bad, Tom. Where's Gusto? Listen, now you'd better get out of the occupied zone before the Germans start taking inventory. Oh, I'm all set. But before I leave, I'm going to see Gusto Nash to say goodbye. Even if it's only for a moment. Well, you can't. She's at German headquarters with the official press. Oh? Huh? Nobody can get there. Nobody. Nobody but a newspaper man. Exactly. Well, so I'm a newspaper man. On what paper? On 400 of them, from New York to San Francisco, the Associated News. <laughs> Martin, you didn't fall on your elbow. You fell on your head. You can't drop in on Gusto with a bunch of forget-me-nots. She's up at Compiègne, covering the armistice. Did you say Compiègne? Exactly. The forest of Compiègne. I guess that settles it, eh? Yeah, I guess that settles it. Attention, please. Gentlemen of the press and lady, in a certain railroad coach about one kilometer from here, the terms of the armistice will be handed to the French government. You will be permitted to visit the historic railroad coach in groups of five after the conference begins. As the Führer will be present, the smoking of cigarettes will not be permitted there. With regard to you, Fräulein... Uh, the name is Miss Nash. Miss Nash. Considering the importance of the occasion, it is suggested that you dispense with all lip rouge. Don't worry. My lips will be as white as chalk. Until then, you will have about an hour. The time is yours, but do it as you please. Is it all right if I take a walk? As you wish, Fräulein. Oh, Tom. Tom, my darling. Our lovely forest. Let's never leave, darling. It's so cool. Let's never leave. There's dew on your hair. No tears, please. 
No tears. No, darling. No tears. Tom. Gusto. Yes? It's been a long time, Gusto. Yes, a very long time. I love you, darling. Turn around. I'm just behind you. <gasps> Tom! It's all right. It's not done with mirrors. It's me. Darling! Darling! No, no, none of that frightened look, please. They won't shoot me. I've got a press card. Phillips fixed it. Oh, but uh, I can't believe you're here. Here, darling, above all places. Wasn't it here they robbed us of a whole day? Yes. Well, I came back to claim it for us before I say goodbye. Oh, darling. G can you get to England? I'm afraid they wouldn't want me. I've got a compound fracture. Oh, Tom. I couldn't break a match. All I can do now is crawl aboard a refugee ship and find some cushy job in America. Flying instructor, maybe. Teaching kids what wings are for. That's a fine end. The end? Why, you don't think this is the end. Just because in that railroad coach this afternoon, they're going to be clicking their heels and saying that freedom is a sign of weakness and incompetence. And that slavery is a badge of pride and patriotism. Oh, no, darling, that can't be the end. You're not crawling back. We are marching back, both of us. You're coming with me? Of course I am. Tom, I've been watching them for ten months. There are things that I've got to say. My voice isn't much, I know, but I want to use it without somebody's hand over my mouth. And you, darling, what a wonderful job you've got, making tens of thousands of pilots for tens of thousands of planes. Tom, remember your prayer. This time we say it to America. Arise, my love, arise, be strong. And they will, Tom. I know America. They'll rise up 130 million of them. And they'll roll up their sleeves and stand up straight and they'll say to anyone under God's heaven, all right, whose way of life is it going to be? Yours or ours? Loretta Young and Ray Milland have given fine performances tonight in Arise, My Love. And if they'll both arise right now, we'll, we'll ask them to take a curtain call. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. Playing a war correspondent was certainly a novelty. Well, war reporting was one of the last male strongholds, C.B. What would Richard Harding Davis and Floyd Gibbons have thought of it? Well, I knew both of them, and they'd probably ask whether the lady in question was a good reporter. Well, it's a very good reporting being done by women in this war. Offhand, I can think of Claire Booth's stories in life from China, Burma, and India. And Shelley Smith, now a prisoner in war in the Philippines. They're in the grand tradition, Loretta, reporting the stories of our national heroes every day. It isn't until the war is over that we find many of them are heroes themselves. In this war, radio as well as the press has its reporter heroes, Ray. For instance, William J. Dunn of the Columbia Network was on the very last boat to leave Java. I made that discovery while preparing the picture about Dr. Carradine Wassell, the Navy hero who brought out nine wounded American sailors on the same boat that Dunn escaped on. Well, I can't think of a woman broadcasting from the battlefront at the moment, but there will be. And now, before we say goodnight, Mr. DeMille, there's a little report from the home front. My home, to be exact. I always keep Lux soap on hand and use it every day. It's a wonderful help to any woman in the caring of her complexion. Now, we'll give that a banner headline. Loretta Lord's Lux. <laughs> Thank you. And now, let me tell you about next week's play. What are we going to hear, C.B.? A delightful comedy, Ray. It's the Columbia picture, You Belong to Me. And our stars will be Merle Oberon and George Brent. You Belong to Me is the story of a woman doctor and her sportsman husband who can't understand why he has to compete with medicine for his wife's attention. Three acts of gaiety and romance next Monday night, with George Brent and Merle Oberon heading a fine cast. Oh, that sounds really wonderful, Mr. DeMille. We'll be in the audience. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. We'll hit the center of the target tonight. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, 
join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Merle Oberon and George Brent in You Belong to Me. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Loretta Young is currently seen in the Columbia picture Bedtime Story. Ray Milland is now being seen in the Technicolor production Reap the Wild Wind. Heard in tonight's play were Cy Kendall as Phillips, Tris Coffin as Shep, John Milton as Pink, and Howard McNair, Fred McKay, Jose Perez, Leo Cleary, Tony Martelli, Charles Seal, Norman Field, Jack Mather, and Tori Carlton. Tune in next Monday night to hear George Brent and Merle Oberon in You Belong to Me. Our music was conducted by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, Mel Vilroyk, bidding you good night on behalf of our guests, our cast, and the Lux Radio Theater. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>